Good evening, everybody. It is uh, my great pleasure to welcome you all this evening to this event. My name is uh, Yasmina Jovanovic. I'm the executive director of the Art Gallery of Algoma in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. I know that we have a lot of people from the Sioux, but also some uh, people who are attending from far away. So welcome to all. And uh, the event today is uh, we are celebrating the exhibition opening of uh, the first solo exhibition by local artist Katrina Thibodeau, and it's called The Art of Emotions. Uh, as I said, this is her first solo exhibition, and we are thrilled that uh, we were the, the, the gallery that was able to host it. Katrina is uh, a local artist uh, who um, is mostly, according to her words, mostly uh, self-taught and she has amazing talent. That Those are my words. And uh, I think it takes a huge passion and dedication to develop a talent. So Katrina clearly has it. And this exhibition is about portraiture. Uh, the portraits seem very simplistic at first sight, but they're actually quite detailed and they're charged with emotions. And uh, that's uh, where the title comes from. The title of the exhibition is The Art of Emotions. I'm not going to, to talk about the art because uh, we have the great pleasure of welcoming Petrina tonight to be with us in the actual exhibition. And by the way, I invite you all to come and see the artwork in person. It's great uh, to see it on screen, but it is different experience when you actually stand in front of the painting. And before we start, I would also like to introduce our staff, um, who you see on screen, the other panelists. Uh, Sarah Cadbertson is our uh, curatorial assistant, and Kirstiana Bordage is our public engagement coordinator, and she is the one who is um, our uh, visual director here. So she is in charge of uh, all the images. And she, she's in the space with Katrina. Uh, Sarah is monitoring the chat box, so please feel free uh, to ask questions and uh, Sarah will be your voice. Uh, now, without any further, further ado, I would like to introduce and welcome Katrina. Welcome Katrina, thank you for being here, thank you for being part of this event, thank you for sharing your passion, your art, your beautiful art with us. And um, I would like to start off by asking you just one question. How did you develop this uh, passion and dedication for art? When did it start and how did it develop? Because it doesn't sound to me like a traditional, uh, you know, usual story, how someone becomes an artist these days. So uh, that's my, my, my first question. And I'm sure that some people in the audience would like to, to know as well. <laughs> so the floor well, uh, is yours. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Yasmina. And I'd like to take the time to thank AGA for giving me this wonderful opportunity. Um, it really, it really means a lot. Um, so I got into oil painting coming up on the year. It'll be a year in April. Um, so given this past year of quite a strange time, you know, I, I really took full advantage of the time that I did have off and jumped in to explore a new medium, which is oil painting. Um, what I'm doing isn't traditional oil painting, however, it's a dry brush technique. So what I'm using is a, a coarser brush, it's a hog hair brush, and it's dry, applied directly onto the stretch linen canvas, um, which is, you know, quite a bit of an advantage using the dry brush technique because I don't have the, the drying time in between layers that you do with traditional oil painting. Um, so that brings me to my first piece. This was the most recent piece that I had finished for this exhibition. <clears throat> 
excuse me, it's called Modern Day Woman. And for this piece in particular, you know, th there's a lot of emotion behind it. Um, you see there's um, a, a bit overwhelming, there's a little bit of suffocation, um, a bit of worry uh, is, is kind of the narrative that I was going for. Um, and, and it's touching upon being a woman in current day, you know, there's a lot of pressure of the, the, the gender norms and the traditions of, of who you're supposed to be. You know, there's these labels of becoming a wife, becoming a mother and the expectations that come along with that. And, you know, you can see she's kind of being pulled in these different directions of, of, of who she should be and where she should go. And I kind of wanted to, to really emphasize that. And, and I think a lot of women today can can say that they've experienced that or to some degree um but what's really nice about about this painting given the narrative is quite heavy i think it lightens up in the sense that you can see she's looking through and she's found a place where there isn't any hands there isn't any pulling um so i i think it's to remind us that you know if if we believe in ourselves and and trust our confidence that we don't have to be worried of that judgment and of of those restraints of of that expectation and to find our own path so this one um yeah it was really exciting to do so that'll bring me to my next piece over here So this is Fajr Banks. Um, that's the nickname I have for my father. Um, I couldn't even tell you why I've been calling him that since, since I was a little kid. And um, I, I'm quite close with both of my parents. I was, I was very blessed in, in that regard. Um, but I have a special bond with my dad. Um, he's just such a great man. And I wanted to, uh, to honor him and to paint a portrait of him, you know, because he's a big part of the reason that I am the woman that I am today. So really, really a special piece here for me. Um, again, it's the oil dry brush technique, same as the last one. Um, and this one really gave me, you know, a little bit of difficulty. It kind of pushed me. Um, it made me figure out a lot of these different techniques here. If we can zoom in on the age lines there, um, there's definitely a lot of repetition in the crease, in the fold, in the highlight. Um, so that really, really helped push me in, in jumping into oil. So um, even though it was a challenging one, I quite enjoyed it. And, you know, I have to say for an old guy, he's, uh, he's still quite handsome. So yeah, I think he was quite happy with this piece, uh, as was I. So that will bring me to this one over here. This, um, this again is an oil dry brush technique. Um, and just for, for you who haven't gotten a chance to, to see the exhibition in person, please do come and see it. Um, but these are five foot canvases. So uh, it doesn't fully do it justice unless you see it in person because um, they are quite impactful. And uh, that's really what I was going for, especially with this piece. There's so much raw motion here, um, you know, this piece is quite, quite heavy there. Um, you can see there's a lot of tension, um, restraint, anxiety, fear, you know, all of these emotions that if, if anyone, you know, really was a part of the last year, I'm sure you felt those feelings. I'm sure you had a bit of anxiety, a bit of fear, a bit of that overwhelming restraint, you know, especially as a business owner, I wanted to scream. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful to be up north and to still have my business. And I'm, I'm definitely very blessed and, and grateful for that. But there was times where well, it was so overwhelming. And I know a lot of the local business owners felt the same way. Um, so th th there is another layer to this piece uh, that's quite personal. Um, but I, I really think it's worth mentioning because I, I think it's an issue that a lot of people in our community are dealing with. Um, and that's the, the opioid crisis that we have going on here. Um, I, have a, I have a loved one who is suffering from an opioid addiction and it is, um, it makes you wanna scream, it's overwhelming. It um, is, is so, it's so heart heavy and it just, it really saddens me to see our community in the direction that it's gone in. And I really hope that we can 
change the narrative around this topic. We can get rid of that stigma and, and really hit it head on and address it as a community. So, you know, anyone who has someone who, a loved one that is suffering from addiction, I, I'm sure you can relate to me. Um, very overwhelming, wanting to scream. But, you know, on, on the other breath, this piece kind of makes me smile and that probably sounds funny because of how heavy the narrative is, but I look at it and I see a woman who is, is really facing that fear. She's letting go. She's getting rid of that energy. And, um, and it's a time for healing, you know, as all of us in, in a certain current state of uh, condition. And um, yeah, so I, I loved making this piece and I hope you guys can come see it in person because it uh, is quite impactful. And that'll bring me to my self-portrait. So this is me. <laughs> um, this was the first large canvas that I had worked on when I started the journey of oil dry brush painting. Um, so again, same, same technique. Uh, the only difference here is the overlay, which is the paint on my face is done with acrylic. I really wanted it to be, you know, to punch, to, to stand out. And it was done with a palette knife. Um, and that was, was with the intention of it looking, it's kind of funny, looking like real paint on paint. It's obviously real paint. Um, but just to have that effect of being able to stand out against the mat from the oil dry brush. Um, so this piece is untitled. Um, it was the intention not to speak about it because I wanted um, I wanted the viewer to kind of get their own impression of it and make their own narrative. But I think it's quite a quite a fun story. Um, so so I will touch upon it. Uh, so going into this, you know, I knew that I, I knew that I wanted to to really give oil painting a good a good try. And I love contemporary art. Um, and I and I know with contemporary art, a lot of the time the subject matter, you know, it, it isn't. Um, you know, a beautiful landscape on a wall, which which is a great narrative, and I love that, but it's kind of confrontational sometimes. There's a lot of emotion. It can make someone uneasy looking at it, and I quite enjoy that because that gives a talking point, and I want there to be conversation around the art. Um, so that was definitely a bit of bit of a hesitation. We see the paintbrush growing, going across the mouth, and, um, and, and this is representative of me coming into the art world and and being hesitant and being a bit um, a bit fearful of that but not caring and doing it anyways I'm not sure who's familiar with this but there was a study done in 2019 um, across the U.S. and it came back that the galleries and museums across the U.S. that 87 percent of the artwork in the gallery were from male artists so you know, that's great and everything, but like as a female, I'm kind of like, okay, you know, like one more thing that you're, you're going into a male dominated industry, which, you know, I'm, I'm not foreign to, um, and it's, it's definitely not going to hold me back, but uh, it, it brings a little bit of, um, of that worry and um, that hesitation, but I'm, I'm quite confident that, you know, if I let my art be my voice, I know that I'll be heard, so, yeah. Wonderful. <clears throat> Hi, Katrina. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm just going to remind everyone that now is a great time. If they've got any questions for you, they can type them in the chat and I'll uh, relay them to you. Um, I have one or two myself. Um, I was wondering, um, was there a particular moment or a special time that inspired you to want to start? Spark? It's just like, I'm going to do it. This is the time. Or was it sort of always under the time to start story? You just broke up a little bit there. Um, so the, the time to start painting. I, I, I've always been a huge fan of art, a huge lover of art. I've been drawing portraits since I was a little kid. Um, and I just kind of, I was always intimidated by oil because I, I had tried it when I was in high school and um, it, it kind of scared me because I wasn't good at it, to be completely frank. Um, so I went into the, the charcoal drawings for a long time and I was able to quite um, almost master that. And, uh, and I just was, you know, at this time in my life where I, I had an opportunity and time off and I was like, I'm just going to jump into this head first and, and, and really give it a go. And I'm so glad that I did because a lot of these pieces take upwards of 80 hours or more to complete. Um, so it definitely gave me that opportunity to really, to really explore this new medium. 
Wonderful. Just let me know if I cut out or anything. But um, I have a question okay, no. from Linda. And she okay. is wondering, what is the next direction you plan on going with your art? And that your work is amazing. Well, thank you, Linda. Um, the next direction for me, you know, I, I really want to jump into the contemporary style of art. I like pushing the boundaries and, and simply trying to get an emotion across on a canvas. So I think it's doing more like avant-garde type of work. I really have been enjoying the large um, portraiture style canvas. Um, and I, I did recently buy supplies to, to start traditional oil color painting. So we'll see, we'll see how much time I have for that, but I'm definitely putting it as a top priority. So that, that, that's my direction, Linda. Thanks for the question. <laughs> Um, I have another one. You touched on it a little bit, but just um, maybe you could just talk a little bit about your process from start to finish, like, uh, you know, why you choose the people that you choose and do they sit for you like that idea. Great. Uh, yeah. So my process, um, I mean, a little bit strange again, because of, because of the time that I was, I was starting, starting this, but um, I have a, a really, really talented friend. Um, her name is Brie Gallagher, she's a photographer. And I was lucky enough to be able to, you know, sit down and, and photograph some people and get some really beautiful images to work off of. So that is one way what I like to do is to make sure that I have a really good photo reference to work off of. Um, so it's not particularly people that I know, even though I do know most of the people in the gallery. Um, it's more on finding the right person to get my message across. So once I find that photograph, um, I, I map it out onto the canvas. So for this one, what I had done is it's a, refer to as a grid system. Um, so it's kind of mathematically measured out in a way. So I would have had all of this sketched on with a light charcoal pencil. And then from there, I take it in sections. Um, so I would have, I believe I started here. I come over, I finish here. So when I say I started here and I, I'm over here, once I'm doing this, I'm done that. I'm not coming back to it. You know, as I go up and I complete, it, it's finished as I go. Um, so depending on you know my new direction of uh, traditional oil painting I do imagine that will change because of the style and having a way for those layers to dry but it really helped me advance in this new medium because it's quite similar to charcoal in the regard that you don't have to wait for dry time or anything and you can really just kind of go with it and um and yeah get a lot done so Katrina, okay, I do have another question from Linda again. Um, what training have you had? Oh, so thank you for the question. Um, what training have I had? Um, so I have, I have no post-secondary. Um, I, I worked in Toronto for about five and a half years and I worked with some amazing, amazing artists and friends that definitely helped guide me. And um, I took some um, life studies, like nude model study um, open classes at uh, OCAD, which is in Toronto. And then for training with fine art, that's pretty much it. You know, I have some great mentors um, that I've connected through social media that I'm very blessed to to have take the time to, you know, critique my work because it's great to, to send a piece to your family or your loved one and be like, hey, honey, like, what do you think of this? And they're like, it's great, you know, and that's so nice to hear. But a lot of the time you just want someone who's gonna, you know, really kind of tear it apart and that that sounds a bit, um, a bit harsh, but that's the only way you're gonna grow. So I really lean heavily on, um, um, my other artistic friends and, uh, and and value their input so yeah wonderful well that's all the questions I have at the moment so unless there's any last minute ones coming through on the chat but other than that Jasmina anything else uh, yes I would like to uh, ask you just if you can touch upon uh, the relationship between the fine art and another uh, art that you do every day, which is also a form of art, and it is fine art in a way. So if you want to say whatever you feel um, would be relevant, please uh, tell us how that works together and uh, how does it influence each other? Absolutely. Uh, thank you for the question. So what Yasmina is referring to is that I'm a tattoo artist. Um, I, I absolutely love what I do and I feel like I don't work. It's, I really, I go to work every day and I, um, 
I, I get to create beautiful pieces on people who trust me with their skin. So it, it, it's amazing. Um, I've been tattooing now, this is my 11th year. And um, I got into it when I was quite young. I was, I was 17 when I started tattooing. And that gave me a lot of opportunities. I that's why I was in Toronto. Um, I've done guest spotting in Montreal and got to work with some really great artists. And you wouldn't think so, but the, the medium of tattooing is, is quite similar to, to charcoal or to painting in the sense that you're still dealing with light and shadow, contrast, you know, all the things that are going to make something look realistic. And with tattooing, as well as my other mediums, I specialize in, in portraits and in realism. So um, I'm quite fortunate that our city is, is, is very good to me. I have a wonderful clientele, I have great friends. Um, my staff at Discover the Canvas is, is amazing and they're like family to me. So I really wouldn't be here where I am today without, without them and all the, um, all the support that I have from my friends and family. So I hope that answered your, your question. I've got a couple more questions. Um, let's see here. Uh, I've got a question from Bernadette. It says, what role did your mom and grandma play in your uh, feminist art? That's Fanti Bernadette. Uh, thank you for the question. Um, so on my the, the nice write up that they did for me here at AGA, um, it does touch upon that I play piano. And that was definitely from um, my, my grandma Strom. Um, yeah, I grew up uh, two doors down from her. So she was definitely a big influence in uh, the musical world, just another art form. So huge influence there and like growing up in Ghouli Bay where, you know, my um, my mom, Sandra, she like, pretty much lives there now. Um, it's beautiful landscapes. And it definitely, when I kind of venture out into doing that type of nature work, I really enjoy going there and, and kind of breathing in the scenery. So I'm so grateful for all of my family and, and friends who have supported me along the way. And I, like I said, I really wouldn't be here without them. Perfect. Um, then I've got one from Angela and it says, you are an incredibly inspiring person. What advice would you have uh, for women coming up through the art scene or in business? Uh, thank you, Angela, for the question. Um, so for someone else coming up through the art scene and in business, uh, don't hold back. Just, you know what, go for it. I, I get so... I get so excited when I talk to young entrepreneurs because, you know, I, I was one once I was, I was super young and it's, it's very overwhelming. And, you know, whether, whether you're in the art field or you just want to start whatever, whatever it is you're passionate about, don't, don't let anyone tell you you can't do it. And if they do let that bring fire under you and you want to do it even more, you know, we have such a good support team um, in Sault Ste. Marie that, you know, if you really want something, you'll get it and you'll find the help along the way. You just got to, you just got to go for it. So if, if anyone's wanting to be an artist, you know, reach out to someone that inspires you and say, Hey, look, like this is what I'm working on. Can you help critique me? I I've literally done that. And it's, it's taught me more than, you know, me trial and error for years and years. Right. So like be humble, go out and get what you want and don't look back, keep looking forward. So Thanks, Anne, for the question. Okay, I've got one from Jessica, and it says, what advice would you give to your younger self as an artist? Jessica, what a good question. Um, what would I give? You know what? Like, I I was, I still am quite, quite brave in it, and I'm, I'm very confident. I, I try and be vulnerable and be really true to my art, but uh, my, my younger self, I wish I would have told myself to calm down. Like you're going to make it, <laughs> just keep going. Um, you know, and then there's still so much more that I want to achieve, but um, yeah, I think I was, I was quite, quite intimidated. I still kind of am, but it's okay. <laughs> um, yeah. I, and, and anyone else who's young and is starting out, like just, just, trust yourself, be confident and go for it. Because it, if you put the time and energy into something, something's going to come out of it. And I have so many people who, you know, will look at a, a tattoo or a drawing or like a painting that, you know, is quite large and they're like, oh, wow, I wish I could do that. And I'm like, have you tried? They're like, oh, haha, you know, I can't draw a stick person. And I'm like, okay, well, serious talk though. Like this took me 80 hours to do. If you were to sit down for 80 hours, not at once, sleep in between, but you know, if you're to sit down for 80 hours, something's gonna come out of it. Like this is years and years of practice, like any sort of medium or any sort of passion. And if you kind of push forward with that, 
you're going to improve. You know, it's, it's just time and time again of, of being consistent and, and following and following that goal. So yeah, thanks for the question. Perfect. Um, and we've got a uh, comment from Annie and it says, could you speak to the choice of black and white? Thank you, Annie. Um, there's something about black and white, the monochromatic, that is so simplistic. Um, I've always just been fascinated by it. And, and I don't know if there's one particular reason other than, you know, it, it allows an emotion to just kind of come through on a page. And um, with color work, which, you know, to be completely honest, maybe I, I didn't jump into color work because I was intimidated by it. Um, but with black and gray, it really has that simplicity. And I find that with especially large scale, you're able to get so much detail without the distraction of all the different colors. And it kind of just allows more for the narrative to come across the page for me anyways. Um, yeah, that was a good question. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Um, then we've got um, another question uh, from someone anonymous and it says, hi, Katrina, I'm watching my with my two young daughters, this is their first art gallery showing. Our question is whether you used art as an expression of emotion when you were young as well. I love that there's young people watching this. That's gonna make me cry. That's so great. Um, thank you for the question. So I definitely did. Like I'm, my parents can attest to this. I was obsessed with drawing when I was a kid. I just would draw all the time. And I remember being probably like in grade five or six and I did this portrait and you know, at the time I thought it was amazing. And I look back and it's so hysterical. It's just, you know, um, but it was good for my age and, and, and I kept pushing forward. And anytime I'd get frustrated, I'd go home and paint and you know, like my painting restrained, that, that has such heavy emotion behind it. And that got me through some very, very tough times in my life. And I think if more people were to find a medium, regardless of what it is or any sort of passion, and allow that, get that energy out and get, get through it, it's going to help you regardless of your age, you know, so whether it's just going to be a hobby or, you know, potentially become a career, just, you know, go for it. So yeah, thank you for the question. Okay, I've got another one here. It says, can you see yourself ever doing acrylic painting from the old guy, your dad, he wrote. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Um, <laughs> acrylic painting. Well, I have done acrylic painting. Um, <laughs> not a lot, though. Um, you know what? Not that not that I, I won't do it. I think it would be more of like um, a relaxed um, kind of meditative experience if I'm wanting to go and just play around with some paint. Um, but I'm, I'm really investing in, in the oil painting. It's, I find that it pushes me. And not to say that I'm above acrylic painting because it is very technical and it is quite difficult. But I really find that um, to master oil painting is so, so difficult. Um, and, and a lot of artists can attest to that, that I'm going to stay on that path and really dive into it because the technique of traditional oil painting there's so many different ways you can go about it that it just excites me and I want to dive in there and really you know give it all of my energy so thanks thanks for the question dad thanks Katrina that's uh the end of my questions I think I'm checking the yeah. chat box as we go but I, I think have one more them. I think we've got I have them one all. more question you got one more um I would like just to, to draw the parallel again uh, between the, uh, the, the tattoo art and the fine art. And uh, I wanted to ask you a question, if your tattoos are all black and white, or do you use color in your tattoos? And does that have anything to do with influencing your oils as well? And also, they're not actually black. They look black and white um, on the on the screen here, and they are monochromatic, but they do have the undertone. Yes, thank you for pointing that out, uh, Yasmina. Um, so to, to answer your question, um, I I'm fully trained in color for for tattooing. Um, I just I, I don't do it very often. I don't have the passion for it yet. Um, so I really try and take on 
um, the black and gray work because I, I want the person coming in to get the best tattoo possible. So if they want to do full color, I would say to go to the person who's super passionate about color. Um, into translating into to oil and into and other mediums. Um, yeah, I, I think just having that foundation of really enjoying the grayscale and it's something that I'm very confident and it's where my skill set lies. You just kind of see it ac across the canvas um, for all the mediums that I work in. Um, so yes, for tattooing, I, I definitely stick with the, the, the black and gray and with realism is pretty much all that I take on um, at this point in my career. And then uh, following that, because I expected that type of answer because, uh, well, you clearly love this monochromatic uh, scheme, but you did mention that you got surprised that you're going to venture into the color. Yes. So, uh, what's your favorite color? In addition Ooh. to. <laughs> Ooh, pink, um, which sounds like such a girly answer. Um, my, my pink, my room as a child was like hot pink and I've just always loved it. It makes me happy, but I, I love color and, and I feel like I'm maybe coming across the wrong way. Um, it's honestly because I'm intimidated, uh, just being completely frank. It, um, there's so much, the color wheel seems so basic, I think to someone just looking at it without a second thought, but there's so much that goes into it. And I'm the type of person where if I'm gonna do something, I wanna do it right and I wanna kind of master it before I move on to something else and not have my hands in too many things, um, which it probably seems like I do from the outside. But I, um, I really wanted to give black and gray you know my full attention and then I'm so excited to get into color because I, I do think all of this work and foundation is going to help me propel through that but it's really going to give me a good challenge and and I'm always up for a good challenge I'm I'm really looking forward to to diving into that and making some pink paintings so <laughs> I've got a couple more questions I, I, love, I love color myself so I look forward to seeing pink <laughs> Well, awesome. Maybe we'll do another exhibition and it'll be yeah, all pink in here. I, I love colors. So, <laughs> yeah. not that I don't like your paintings, they're amazing. And I said that, and that's why you're here. And, you know, like they are amazing. But um, yeah, I'm glad to hear that you are venturing into color. <laughs> I have a couple more questions. Um, I have another question from Jessica. And she asks, what supports do you wish you had as a young artist in our community? Advice, pathways to give youngsters involved in the art scene? Great question. Um, I wish that I had a mentor. I didn't really have a specific person. Um, I, I, you know, I have a great uncle, Elmer, um, who, who's an artist, but I didn't really spend much time with him uh, as a child. Um, but I, I, I wish I had, I had a mentor and I had um, maybe been exposed to AGA and, and the wonderful classes that, that they do have here for children. You know, they're a great resource for our community. Um, you know, it, it would be nice to see the community come together and, and maybe do more interactive things with our youth. Um, I love what they're doing downtown with like the, the airbrushing and, and, and that artwork as well. Um, but for youth specifically, yeah, I, I really wish that, um, that, that I had some sort of a mentor and you know anyone who follows discover the canvas my business um, I, I'm always open to, to talking to anyone um, who's looking to improve their skills um, so you know the youngsters that are watching feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions um, I, um, I I would love to be that mentor for someone else that I didn't have um, but um, but yeah, just any parent out there who has young kids too, like just encourage them, um, be supportive. You know, the skills, especially for charcoal drawing, you know, are, are quite affordable and just, you know, encourage them to keep going with it and, and find their niche. Cause, cause I found the niche of realism very young and I had the support from my family and the encouragement to, to really stick to it. And I don't know if I would, I probably wouldn't be standing here in an art gallery show if, if I didn't have that encouragement because you know kids, kids are vulnerable and um they kind of need that push they don't have the confidence that we all seem seem to have regardless of if it's real or not so thank you for the question though i have another one from stacy and it says you are amazing and have all the talent in the family what has been your favorite form of art so far 
Thank you, Stacy. It's my cousin. Um, my favorite form of art. That's so hard. Like I immediately, I think tattooing, and and that just goes to the emotion because I'm I'm so honored to be trusted with a lot of memorial tattoos, and to be a part of that experience, that healing um, with someone is just so. Yeah, it's so beautiful. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I, I love, I love painting. Now that I've gotten into this, it hasn't even been a year yet. But I'm just, I'm so fired up about it. Um, but I'm, I'm exploring this new medium. Um, but charcoal has been a really big favorite of mine for a long time. So I guess all of them. I don't know. <laughs> that, that, that's a hard question to answer. <laughs> okay, and I've got another one, and it says, um, "Would you ever consider doing monochromatic works in various hues, a shade of pink, for example?" Oh, thank you for the question. Um, I have never really thought about that. You know what, it would actually be quite a nice transition. Because you could do it in oil dry brush. Sorry, I'm just thinking out loud here. Um, yeah, that would be I haven't considered it. Haven't considered it to answer the question. But it's definitely something that that I should because that sounds like such a good idea. I could do all pink ones. Oh. Yes, Nina would love that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you are correct. <laughs> yes, thank you for the question. Well, if we don't have any more questions, uh, thank you so much, Katrina, for being with us tonight and bringing your um, very uh, provocative and emotional art and your thoughts, sharing your thoughts with us and uh, explaining some of the works and the stories behind them. And they're all very powerful. And we do wish you from, I wish you personally from the bottom of my heart, uh, great success in the future. As I said at the beginning, it is uh, our great pleasure that we were to host your first solo exhibition. Oh, the other thing that nobody mentioned, you didn't. Uh, is that this particular painting, your self-portrait behind you, was in, featured in the exhibition of the Ontario uh, Association of Artists, right? Yes, it was. Uh, and that did not really make or break this exhibition, but it is nice to know that uh, it has been, it's a jury exhibition and it was uh, virtual. And I think in, it opened in November. Yes. So, so it is, I know that you have a huge, uh, huge uh, future in front of you, a lot of possibilities and a lot of um, challenges which you like and you thrive on them. So don't stop, continue. And it's great to see a young uh, person from our community uh, being so how confident and your portraits are bold, but you are also bold in a very humble way, if that makes any sense. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you so much for all the kind words and you guys have been so great. And I um, I can only dream to have another opportunity like this. So I'm, I'm gonna give it my all and hopefully I can, I can create that again for myself. So yeah, thank you for everyone watching. Please come see the exhibition. There's another one going on in the other room and this is such a beautiful place. And um, yeah, it's really so different when you're here in person. So get, get out of the house, come here, you know, um, make a day of it so uh thank you to aga for having me um all of the support that i have at home and uh and friends and family for for watching so yeah thank you it's a great pleasure and yes i encourage everybody to come it is a safe one of the safest places according to another study that was released <laughs> uh, that uh, galleries and museums are one of the safest places in terms of the pandemic so please come and um, immerse yourself into beautiful art in both galleries. At the moment, we have local artists everywhere. So we have uh, 67 uh, participating artists in the Winter Festival of Art. Uh, the theme and the title of the exhibition this year is Finding Joy. And a lot of beautiful colors in that one. <laughs> And also beautiful exhibition of Katrina's works um, in the next room. So we hope to see you and um, we hope to be, we will be in touch with, uh, with you, Katrina, and we will follow your future successes.
So thank you, everybody. Thank you to all who participated. And uh, uh, Sarah, do you have anything else? No, nope, we're good. I was just passing on our gallery hours to everyone, so. And uh, thank you, uh, uh, Kai. Thank you, Christiana, for being a wonderful host as always. And uh, thank you, Katrina. And everybody, have a good evening. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye. Thanks. Bye.